Hello and welcome to a brief tutorial on how to make a world map. Um, full disclosure, the one that I'm making right here in front of you isn't, isn't going to end up like this one in the picture, um, but I'm going to teach you, I'll tell you at the end how to make, take what we make here today and turn it into, into this, uh, you know, this very thorough world map. So the principles are the same. Um, we're just going to start by making some brushes. Now you can download brushes um, depending upon what you're using them for. You might want ones that are royalty free or whatever. So I'm just making some. I'm showing you how to make them. So you just create a white uh, background with a black picture and then you select all and you go in Photoshop, you go edit and then uh, define brush pattern. So I'm just making some uh, mountains and foothills and uh, a town and a castle. I would also recommend doing this for trees if you're doing like forests and things um, it's very effective to do to do that and it gives you good variation and things like that and you can play around with like uh, if you, you know you're trying to do hills and trees and things you can make it very random um, and using the scatter options which we'll look at later and to get to the scatter options um, you just uh, select your brush in the paint mode and then you open up the brushes tab in Photoshop um, you're going to see me here struggle to make a triangle. Always remember that there's these automatic shapes here that you can use. And even with that, I still struggle. <laughs> Noob city. Um, this is just the town. I'm just making some simple representations for the town. That way I can use it sort of as a stamp. They're all going to be the same. And you can change the size and things and, um, you know, fairly easy. Or you can keep it consistent, uh, which is more the reason why I'm doing it is it keeps it look, it gives it a visual look that, uh, is consistent and that's what we want. Um, this project is for the World Builder uh, event that we're currently doing um, on the Game Master Stash Facebook page. So if you haven't seen them, go and check that out. Um, Facebook.com slash Game Master Stash. Um, and basically, uh, the, the point of this is to talk about the, you know, what's going through my mind when I'm making uh, the nation. So this is, this is nation three that I'm going to end up working on. Um, we've just made the nation shape using, I guess they call it the cow patch method. Uh, I can make another video explaining that if people actually care um, <laughs> enough to, to see that. But basically you just, uh, you do render clouds and then you um, sort of make a, make a half tone pattern and then, then you can sort of select the, the shapes. But you, I mean, you might come up with your own shapes. Now, uh, I just want to talk about this. So I'm going to start by making a clipping mask. Um, which will help me with Photoshop. You just press sort of between layers, alt and click the area between the layers. Um, and that, that way when I draw on it, it won't go outside of the line, if that makes sense. Um, so that's what I'm doing in Photoshop here. And you'll see me adjust the brush, um, the brush information here. So there's a couple ways you can get to that. You can click that button or you can just click the tab and select brushes. Um, the thing I'm looking for here is the, the spacing. But you can see here, if you were using a forest or trying to make this foothills random, you could definitely use uh, the scatter to sort of make them a bit more random. And you can change the size that they use and stuff like that. Photoshop's really good for that. And that's why I'm using it. There we go. That's the spacing that I'm after. So I turn all those other things off. All right. So the whole point of this video is to sort of show, talk about the process uh, and, and what, what's going on in my mind. So this, I wanted people to be focusing on this middle area. And whenever I make a map, I like to think about the geography. I'm really focused on sort of, you know, why would things be the shape they are? Uh, in this case, um, I wanted a lot of mountains, partly because of the sort of storyline that I've picked up, um, you know, creating this, that these factions are fighting and we need a reason for them to be divided on such a small space. And I think physical terrain is a great way to do that, um, to, you know, to create a lot of separation um, between, especially during this time, you know, this is like, often we talk about like medieval sort of era, which in that time, you know, roads were created by the Romans. It was not, you know, like <laughs> they, they weren't a solid... Um, you know, like it wasn't as easy as it is today to cut through things like mountains and hills. Um, these are foothills. So, you know, the, the ground doesn't go like cliff face of a mountain and then smooth. So I think it's really important to use the foothills. Uh, when I talk about foothills, I'm really talking about much, um, you know, very hilly terrain. I'm not talking about little hills. I'm talking about steep stuff. That's a big pain in the butt to walk up, you know, um, that would be hard to take uh, you know, a road up or a cart up, you know, if you were doing it by hand, things like that. Um, I'm also using these foothills to separate the, the towns, um, in a, in a sort of less, 
extreme way. Um, you'll notice that I've left spaces between them, especially on that western side of those mountain ranges. Um, and, and it's important to leave those spaces because, again, you know, you, with geography, you've got valleys and, and nooks and crannies in the, in the landscape. And all that's really important. The way I'm sort of imagining this terrain piece, um, you know, there's different ways mountains get made. Volcanoes is one and sort of a you know, tectonic shift is another. I'm imagining that this is two tectonic plates that are sort of pushing together. And um, that's what's created these, these large, massive mountains. And um, because of that, you're going to have these sort of seams. You've got to imagine like where... Where there's one mountain, there should be like a seam of mountains. And where there's islands poking out of the ocean, that's because the island is basically a mountain, right? And the water is on top. So, um, you, know, you just got to think about geography and how geography plays into all this. Being a geography teacher definitely helps. <laughs> so, um, you know, just think about that when you're map making. Um, I've, I've sort of blocked off that area to where the n sort of neighboring nation is up there as well, which I'm trying to avoid, you know. Um, you'll notice I'm going to put them in these, these sort of hill areas in the middle of the mountains as well, and that's because I want sort of like a tundra landscape that's uh, quite high, like an alpine area. Um, but yeah, I'm just sort of separating things off. I'm making sure that I keep some empty spaces that are sort of lower. Uh, maybe it's been a bit terraformed by the by the places that are around. Um, but that's where my nations are going to sort of be. That's where my towns are going to sort of be, my little factions. Because um, that was going to play an important part. So now we're going to do towns. I'm going to put towns on a new layer. Um, and again, I'm just uh, keeping the towns consistent, using them as a stamp. And I'm just going to put them where I think they'd be settled, you know, and uh, you keeping in mind, I want most of the people to live on this interior area here. So um, my towns are going to be focused there, but obviously people are going to make space where there is space. Um, I, I, those three towns that sort of make sense to me because I would imagine that would be somewhat protected from the ocean as well. You got to think about, you know, how is the ocean going to move? And that's going to make a big difference. We've got the castles. Now the castles, I sort of see the castles as two different things. One, the dwarven cities, which are in the mountains, which are very fortified for their mining and things like that. Um, I, I then sort of have castles which are there for protection. So, um, the castles that are uh, in the um, sort of the, the air openings of the bay are there to protect the bay. The castle that's on the western side is sort of to protect that western area. And then the castles, the other castle is sort of like to protect that main capital city that's, that's there on the ground. Now, so here's where we get into, um, you know, getting a, a visual idea of what the mountain's going to look like, the map is going to look like. So I, I do three different layers. I do mountains. Um, I then do like the the highlands, the the foothills that we've got there, and then I'll do the um, the sort of flat areas. And I do them in quite a high contrast at first when I'm blocking them in, just so I can get an idea for where um, things are going to go. So you'll see here I have um, these green uh, color for the highlands. And I'm just it, it, going through also gives you an idea of what the shape of the terrain is like. Like if you go through quite close like this, you get a, a sense of that. I'm not going to show you this whole process because it's going to take forever if I do. Um, so I'll cut to the next bit. Um, I'm going to leave that bit in the middle of the mountains because I'm actually going to do that white as like snow to represent that it's sort of like an, an alpine tundra. So this is what it looks like when I'm finished. We're going to start doing the flatlands, right? The the lowlands. Um, I'm probably actually going to fill this, and yeah, we'll fill this, and we'll rub out sort of the the areas that are, are relevant. Now, it's really important when you're doing this step. This is the part where you sort of actually are blocking out the terrain, where you get the sense for where where the land lays. And um, you'll notice that you want to keep all those little nooks and crannies between the hills because that's how real life works, you know. And that's where your roads and your rivers and things are going to go. So when I'm building my map, I'm thinking about that. I'm thinking like, where are the rivers going to go? Where are the roads going to go? How do people get around? Why is the terrain this way? Um, you know, where you have hills, you should have valleys. And also it gives it a very nice look. Right now, you're probably looking at this thinking, going, "This looks like garbage. This looks like MS Paint. Who cares?" Right? Um, but the, the premise of this, doing these first steps, is what gives you an excellent result when you get to the later details. And we'll have a look at that other map at the end of this, and I'll just explain the difference. Uh, so, you know, differences between that and this sort of more MS Paint looking map uh, that we've got going on here. But if it's important to do this in high contrast to start with, because it really creates a, a sense of the visual of, of what your map is going to look like. 
And you can see on this western side, I'm, I'm getting rid of a lot of this high, this highland area because, um, you know, I'm, I'm thinking like this is where it goes into the water. Um, you know, it's not, it's not necessarily flat, but it is lower. And this is where a lot of the rivers are going to go. This is where, you know, all that water that falls on that mountain is going to run off, you know. Understanding the water cycle is very important to map making. Um, and we're going to talk about rivers later. And I guess this cr creates how the rivers are going to flow because rivers will always go the easiest path to the ocean and they always go downhill so what we're doing by doing this is creating valleys for the rivers to flow in it also creates some variation in your terrain which looks nice and um by you know doing using a much smaller brush and going through and doing all this um you know that's really important i'm also conscious of keeping this area some people were talking about when they saw the shape of my map like oh why wouldn't you just dig a canal and i wanted to really focus on that internal area is protected and it only has one way in and one way out and that's deliberate right um so i didn't want to add that canal in and i think that creates a lot of the tension of the setting that i'm trying to build uh to really emphasize these mountains i've just gone and added some like snowy peaks to them um it sort of really shows you which mountains are very high and which mountains are not i'm going through and just making those highlands look a bit like tundra um you know giving giving them showing that that's a different plane that's not on the ground level that's up higher um, you know, for the dwarves to hunt on and things like that. Um, and we're just going to go around and we're going to make all these really big ma uh, mountains stand out. Now, they might not actually have ice peaks in, in the game um, because of the climate that we're in or whatever. Um, but I just really wanted to make that a big emphasis. Um, you know, so you can see that's the that's what the map's starting to look like. And we really get that visual sense of like where, where is high, where is medium, where is low, right? And um, that's, that's going to help us now that we go to do our... Um, our rivers and you can see here um i i mess up the clipping mask at the start here um and you'll see this is how clipping mark works you see that went over the edge so if i if i activate the clipping mask when i draw over the edge it doesn't go over the edge so rivers follow three simple rules they always go downhill they always take the easiest path and if there's an area where they can't get around they'll pull until they can find a path out right um and sometimes they'll take more than one path as you can see here um you got to think about you know this is high this is low and making those colors appear really does that and using a different layer for your rivers and, and roads helps because that way you can go through and paint things later on and make them look pretty um and you can just see everywhere that there's is high the water has to go downhill somewhere right and that's what's going to make your river so a lot of your rivers are going to flow out of your mountains because you're going to get water from all over those mountains collecting and and maybe it's snow and it melts or maybe it's just precipitation and rain um and you can see we've got those crags in the uh in the landscape there that we want to really make use of and you can see i'm trying to follow the contours of the land of what i've made and that's really important um try to go downhill i know i just went uphill there to connect that castle but try to go downhill because it will help you to understand and you can see here that 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 helps create that snaking thing as well you know if you're looking for that um you know easiest path that often helps to to you know create the snaking that, that we're looking for so um once we're finished this we're just going to go and edit the the layer just to make it look a bit nicer um i tend to put in like a drop shadow and a inner glow in this case i just did the inner glow and i try to make it like a blue glow and i give it a bit of a, a jitter um as well so it changes the thing and usually um i drop the opacity and you'll see the opacity dropped on them on the main map when we look at the the real big map that i've done um, so that's sort of my thinking when I'm making the map. The next part is the road. I like to have road in a, in a high contrast color, so a red or a, um, or a yellow. And eventually I'll put a, a black stroke around this to sort of, and maybe a drop shadow to make it look a little less like it's MS Paint, you know, trying to get rid of that MS Paint feel. For the purposes of this world building thing, I'm just going to use the MS Paint feel uh, map uh, for what we're doing because we're, we're talking about world building not map making really in our project so I'm just trying to do this as fast as possible but the premise of what I'm trying to do is the same roads um, tend to follow the same rules as rivers you know they take the easiest way uh, because it's expensive and you saw there I was about to cross over the ocean I'm like that would be way too expensive you can't build a bridge over the ocean go around and that would that, you got to think about that and like I was saying before you know most of the roads are you know, made by the Romans in the sort of medieval ideas that we have of, of what where D&D sits. Though you might choose to do something different if you're in a fantasy world, which, you know, we are. Um, major cities are connected by roads, and I think that's important, is, you know, which cities should be connected. 
Um, and usually the cities that are connected are the important ones. Um, like they're important because they're connected, not the other way around. I thought long and hard about whether I should connect these other cities and I decided I would because of the castle that's there. If it wasn't for that castle, um, then I wouldn't have done it. You can see I want sort of water transport to be the main sort of area here um, in my in my town. Um, these roads are not going to be used. They're not going to be safe. So that's the finished map. Now you might be looking at thinking like, you know, RJ, this looks like crap. And I'm with you on that. <laughs> but the difference between this map and the map that we're going to see in a second is literally just it doesn't have the textures and it doesn't have the names. Um, so it's not hard to put uh, the textures and the names on. And, and I'm going to explain that in a second. Um, just have a look at here. You can see the mountains. You can see the geography that I have in mind. Um, it's really all focusing on this idea that these towns are not connected. They're not friendly to each other. They're separate. They, they try to survive on their own. And um, that's really the theme of, of what I was going for here. And I wanted to make a terrain that really matched that. And I think I've, I've done that very well with all these mountains, this mountainous uh, and these hilly areas in the middle. Now, you could put forests and things like that um, and I'd highly encourage people to do that I'm probably not going to do that for this map uh, just because it doesn't really matter that much so this is um, my mystic times map and you can see uh, we've zoomed in here to sort of the wolf and fangs area and you can see the the mountains are literally the same thing you know they're, they're that gray color with that white tip the only difference is that the uh, brush I used was a much more high detail brush um, one that I paid for online from a, like a stock photos thing. Um, you can see the, the trees that I used, uh, you know, the forest area. That is just like a grass texture. Uh, it might even be two grass textures. So I'm just painting that with a, a brush and low opacity and sort of um, just painting that texture over where I want it to be. Um, you can see instead of a black line around the edges of the... Um, of, of the actual map itself I've used like a dark blue line and then to give it that I've got it like an, another stroke on the outside which is a, like a, a very a color very similar to the ocean and then the ocean instead of just being a paper texture is actually you know a blue paper texture um, again you can see it's just brown for where the where the highlands are um, and then the flat grassy bits are actually a flat grassy texture which I've put a bit of a blur on and a bit of an um, artistic filter on and then everything else is just the text you know uh, and, and the symbols are a bit more complicated so it's very easy to make maps like this and, and it's it doesn't take much difference to go from um you know the the crappy ms paint look which um is actually how this map started i painted this map originally in ms paint the very first version of this map was ms paint um and then took it to photoshop and, and upgraded it over the years so it's really important to understand that you know all these all these things are the same what really matters though is is considering geography and considering uh you know what is going to be where and why um, you know, the, the, you're going to have a lot of forests in, in low valleys where water gathers. You're going to need water for a forest, you know, and things like that is the only real other thing that we haven't talked about. But just using geography is really going to be a big deal. So I hope this was very helpful to you. And it just takes a little bit longer time to take the MS Paint map and turn it into something nicer. The, everything else is still the same. So thank you for watching. And um, if you have any comments, I'd love to hear them. And uh, yeah, check out. Uh, the the Facebook page Game Master Stash. Thank you very much. Ciao for now.